okay that's bright hi guys what's up how are you guys doing welcome back to my channel unless you're new and in that case thank you so much for stopping by welcome to my jungle i'm so glad to have you we just recently hit 3,000 subscribers and I'm so excited about it. So that means there's a lot of new people here, a lot of new viewers. I just wanted to give a very warm and grateful welcome and thank you to all my new subscribers. Today, we're gonna do some plant updates, just some random plant updates. If you've been here for a while, then you probably know that I typically do like plant updates about once a month, but it's been a couple months since I've actually done an update video. I figured let's just do it. I have so many random things to show you guys. I have a few things that you guys have seen me trying to nurse back to health or that you've seen me unbox. I have lots of random stuff, so if this sounds like something that you are interested in, then stick around and let's get to it. Okay guys, I have a few things setting here um, that I'm gonna show you guys and then we're going to deep dive into my humidity boxes. I have two of them now. So I don't even have the one that I made on camera. I ended up getting a larger glass aquarium and filling that up. And then I also got this tote because I have some larger plants that could really use the extra humidity. So yeah, let's just get right to it. Okay, where to start? Okay, let's just start with some Hoyas, shall we? So in my Hoya collection video a couple months back, I told you guys that I was struggling with these two Hoyas. So this is Hoya Bella and this is Hoya Lacanosa. I was having an issue with both of them dropping leaves constantly. The leaves were just turning yellow and I lost entire vines of leaves, like entire stems. Yeah, these plants were both quite a, quite a bit more full whenever I got them, but they just weren't happy. So I had Hoya Lacanosa in a terracotta pot. I don't know if you guys watch our channel or not. If you don't, you definitely should. You're missing out. But um another lovely plant youtuber by the name of wild fern she's absolutely beautiful guys and she just has an awesome channel i love her style i love her personality she's so sweet and down to earth if you guys don't already definitely go check her channel out but she actually messaged me on instagram and let me know that i think it was the bella really doesn't appreciate being underwatered and that you know maybe it's a watering issue because i don't water my hoyas very often the lacanose is another thin leafed hoya so yeah i have them both in ceramic pots now and i've been keeping up with my watering not letting them dry out as much as i would my more succulent leaf toys and look guys they're doing a lot better so let's look at bella first look so i lost most of the plant aside from this one vine but since getting her watering right she's actually pushed off this entire new little separate vine here that's growing off of this one we have new leaves so exciting and then it looks like she's going to push off another little vine down here so i think i finally have her figured out i think she's finally happy and yeah i'm just really excited about it because i really didn't want to lose this plant but it makes sense thicker leaf toys obviously are more succulent they don't need as much water as thinner leaf toys so hopefully i can get her happy enough to bloom for me and then hoya lacanosa um, it's doing good too. I mean, some of the leaves still look a little bit sickly, a little bit wrinkly, but she is rehydrating, I do believe, because, guys, we have some new growth coming in. That's like a new vine growing in right there from the base, and then there's some more new stuff going on right here on the inside of the pot so yeah i think that she is doing a lot better i think she's going to be okay hopefully this time next year i can show you both of these plants and they will be fully established blooming who knows a girl can dream right but yeah lacanosa and bella are doing so much better guys and i'm just so thankful Okay, I have another Hoya for you guys. So this is Hoya Irina. I love this Hoya, but I mentioned that she had never done anything. I mean, she tried to put off leaves a couple times and they ended up falling off or getting knocked off. But guess what, guys? <laughs> Look, it's a new leaf. I've had this plant for, honestly, guys, quite a long time and it's never done anything for me. Start to push off new leaves and then it would drop them. And I actually, this was in, uh, I believe this was in terracotta as well. And I switched it over to this little ceramic planter. 
it's doing so much better. But look how pretty this new leaf is. I'm just so excited about it. I don't want to mess with it too much and knock it off. It's at the size now where I don't think it's going to drop the leaf but you never know with Hoyas, okay? I'm really excited about this, guys. And then if you look right here, my nails are super grungy, I'm sorry. If you look right here, we have another leaf, little baby leaf coming in as well. She's doing things, I'm very happy about that. Uh, I have my frat at care that I wanted to show you guys. So this is actually the baby that my friend Sarah sent me last spring, or well, this past spring. And it was a little start off of her big plant. She did send me a larger one, but just kept getting spider mites over and over and over and I lost that plant. I was very sad about it. Yes, I'm sorry, Sarah. I did tell her. But this one had one leaf, I think. One or two itty bitty leaves. I'd have to go back and watch that video because I don't remember, but I think they were they were smaller than this. And she wasn't sure if it was gonna make it. And guess what guys? It it's making it. Now I do have to say I've been struggling with uh, spider mites on my alocasia really bad this fall. So I have lost some leaves, but um, this one I think is finally free of them. It better be, it better be. I basically just have to keep treating them over and over. But look, it's a full plant now. Obviously the older leaves are quite droopy, so I'll probably lose those, you know, but look how big these newer leaves are. They are literally the size of my hand. I'm just so happy that he made it. He's growing really well. Ah. So in this little terrarium, vivarium, whatever you want to call it, this little glass situation here. I have put my Begonia Chloristicta green form and I also have a piece of my brandy in here that had root rot and the rest of it that I was able to save is in my little humidity box which you'll see in a little bit. But yeah I did lose a couple leaves on this plant guys because it dried out way too much and I didn't actually realize it. But it's doing really well now. I swear that these leaves have gotten larger since I put it in here and just more vibrant in general. I love this begonia. It's so pretty. I can't wait to acquire the red form. And then we have another little leaf down here and then we have a new leaf. We have a new leaf coming in right here in the middle. I know it's hard to see. I apologize. And then my brandy guys didn't really do a whole lot for me until it got root rot and I chopped it up. But since putting the pieces in an enclosed space with high humidity, it's really pushing off pretty leaves. Um, the leaves it was putting off were like this big and they would be ripped and torn and damaged. But look how perfect these little heart-shaped brandy leaves are. So cute. So yeah, I'll definitely be probably be keeping my brandies in an enclosed space because they just don't do well here in my standard everyday humidity, my household humidity. Even though I run humidifiers, my brandy just doesn't do well. So it's gonna be living in an enclosed space probably for a while, if not forever. But yeah, I just wanted to show these guys to you. And then I have this, I'll pop in really quickly. So this is the Raphidophore tetrasperma. This is the non-tissue culture that I got in a plant swap with Carolina over from Instagram. And it's actually variegated. So it has this little patch of variegation here. These were cuttings, but they rooted up really well in water. I did actually lose a leaf recently. I don't know what happened. It just kind of crisped up and fell off. Luckily, it wasn't the variegated leaf. And there's another little speck of variegation on this leaf as well. So I'm just hoping that this babe will start to grow for me and maybe it'll put out another leaf with variegation. That would be really cool. But we'll keep tabs on him and see what happens. I also hauled this plant a while back. This is the Anthurium Magnificum and it's doing wonderful. It hasn't lost a single leaf, guys. Uh, I recently potted him up in this and took him out of the moss. I just have moss laying on top of the pot. Um, but it is, he is in soil. Yeah, he hasn't lost a single leaf. This anthurium has sh probably shipped the best out of any of them I've ever ordered. This was also a plant swap. This was a trade. I traded uh, a rooted, well, it was starting to root, cutting of my glorious. It's beautiful. I absolutely adore it. There's no uh, new leaves, no new growth coming in on this guy yet. I mean, there looks like there may be a new leaf about to come out uh, or start to form down here at the base, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Too close to call. My Magnificum is also doing very well. So this guy, he's not in an enclosed space or anything, but this is my Philodendron Plowmanii that I also hauled 
whenever I hauled the Forgetii in my elbow. This plant was beautiful. It arrived perfect, except it had a really nasty case of root rot. So I had to remove most of the roots on this plant. I did lose a leaf. I only lost one, believe it or not, but the rest of them are really flimsy. So I have him staked up here, but he is in moss rerooting. I haven't pulled him out to check on him, but he does feel pretty snug in here. So I do think that he has some new roots that have came in. If we look here, he has this new growth point, which is growing. It's continuing to grow up out of this little container. So I'm hoping that it will put out a new leaf soon. You know, it's philodendrons are tough. I've said it time and time again, philodendrons are some of the toughest plants that I've ever grown. And that's another reason why I love them. They're just so resilient. Thought I would share him with you really quick and let you know that this plant is still alive and still kicking and doing pretty well considering. All right guys, let's go ahead and move into my humidity boxes and see what's going on in there. I'm just gonna pull a few things out and then I will take the camera over and we'll actually look inside the boxes. But this is something I am just like overwhelmingly excited about. This is the plant I initially traded with Carolina for. I traded a cutting of my Splendid for a cutting of her Varicosum because believe it or not, I actually didn't and don't own a Philodendron Varicosum or a Philodendron Melanochrysum. Melanochrysum still on my list, but the cutting I ended up getting was just a stick, basically, but it was a top cutting, and it had a new growth point. Uh, the leaf ended up getting really damaged in the mail. It fell off when I pulled it out of the box, but um, it, the growth point actually started pushing out within a few days. So I, I initially put this in a Ziploc bag, and it started pushing that leaf off, but it was rotted. It was black and mushy so I had to remove that and then I ended up placing her in my humidity box and since doing that she pushed, pushed off another growth point and look guys oh my god I'm so excited I don't want to mess with it too much but this is my very first ever philodendron varicosum leaf it's so adorable oh my gosh it's so freaking cute and I just cannot wait to see what else she pushes out I can't wait to watch these leaves grow and mature and for her to turn into a full plant really uh, i do believe that she's rooted because when i tug on the stem it doesn't have any give it feels like it's pretty firm down in the moss so i have a pretty good feeling that there is some root action going on in here this new leaf is just like a reassurance i guess that it's going to be okay and then if we look right here there is another growth point coming up out of this so it's safe to say my philodendron varicosum stick is growing and rooting and doing really well. So I was just so excited to share this one with you guys. I can't wait to get that lovely red pattern on the back of the leaves. It's just gonna be so much fun. Since we're talking about the swap that I did with Carolina, here's the next thing that she sent me. She really outdid herself, guys, if I'm being honest. And this one is just, it was such an exciting extra that she sent me because the leaf on the varicosum ended up damaged by a grow light before shipping and then shipping really did a toll on it so she sent me extra that's why she sent more than the varicosum which she did not need to do this right here is philodendron 69689 and this is the really really cool tri-leaf philodendron um i did have to cut the tip off so it kind of takes away from what this leaf actually looks like but i would definitely advise you to google if you don't know what this plant is because it's really freaking cool guys the tip ended up with a little bit of fungus funky stuff going on uh, a couple days after shipping so i did remove that and the rest of the leaf believe it or not has held on so i really couldn't believe it i was pretty sure i was going to lose this leaf now this guy did have a little bit of root going on a little bit of root action but i still wasn't comfortable just potting him up so i did put him in this little baby food container actually in moss and i actually pulled this guy out like two weeks ago i think to check on him and he has some really good roots but not only that guys there was two different growth points coming in off of the main stem down here so you can't tell yet obviously because of the moss but I, like I said I took them out and I checked and there definitely is new growth coming up which I'm so excited about so I am just patiently waiting for at least one of those new growth points to push up out of the moss and get a new leaf I cannot wait to see what the new leaves on this guy looks like I'm just so excited 
yeah, I can't wait. So after he puts off at least one, maybe two new leaves, then I will go ahead and pot him up. But he seems really happy in here right now, so I don't want to disturb him. But I really love this philodendron, guys. I can't wait to show him to you when he's like a full plant because this one's really fun. It's really exciting. This will probably be one of my favorite philodendrons in the future, definitely. I'm noticing that a lot of these plants really need a good drink of water, so I'm gonna have to do that as soon as I shut the camera off. But you guys may have seen me do this unboxing a couple months ago. This was Anthurium violinorium, violinorium or something like that. I'll put the name on the screen. I can't say it very well, but it was a little baby seedling that I got off of Etsy. And guess what? As soon as I threw it in the humidity box, guys, he pushed off two new leaves, two new leaves at once. So this is a new leaf here. Look how cute. And this is another new leaf right here. Isn't it the cutest thing ever? And you can tell that the veination is just a teeny bit more prominent in these, these newer leaves than it is in the older ones. So I have not repotted this. This is a pot that it was shipped in and it's doing really well, guys. I am just so excited. Obviously the seedling doesn't look anything like what the adult mature form will look like these leaves get really beautiful they get really big and really gorgeous so I just can't wait I can't wait until it grows up it's still a baby right now but it's doing really well my little anthurium babe oops okay guys now I have a sad one so in that order with the anthurium uh, I think I actually ordered this from a different shop though I got a raffidophora hayi which is a type of shingling raffidophora I had to take a little break to tend to my baby girl but yeah so I ordered the shingling plant it was mounted on a board but the roots were actually in a pot and soil which I really liked I, I like that but um, I it, it started yellowing the plant started yellowing almost immediately and it just continued to get yellow leaf after yellow leaf so I ended up pulling it out of the pot to check on it it had only a couple roots and they were completely rotted away I mean it was bad and also the plant had outgrown the plank that it was sent on like it was already too long for it so I had gotten a larger piece of wood plank of wood and I remounted the plant onto the wood uh, on sphagnum moss and I didn't put it in a pot anyways guys I was afraid to water too much and rot it I think maybe I didn't water it enough I don't know what happened but eventually I ended up just taking it off the wood because it was dying a very slow painful death and putting it in a ziploc bag of moss and I mean it just I, I only kept this to show you guys I found it dead like a week and a half ago and I kept it because it still looks exactly the same as it did so I really don't even want to touch it because it's nasty but let's see if we can get a peek in there this is my poor, poor, you can't see it. This is my poor, poor Raffidophora hayi. There we go. So he turned to complete mush. No saving him whatsoever. Like he, he's completely rotted and molded and just dead. So this was my very first ever shingling plant that I've ever brought into my collection. I was really excited about it, but I was really nervous about it. I watched videos on how to care for it like I really tried to keep this thing alive and I just couldn't I just couldn't keep it alive I couldn't reroot it it just rotted away on me and this is what I have and I guess I just kept this to show you guys that this does happen sometimes I only had this plant maybe two months before this happened maybe two months yeah and it never did good whatsoever everything I did just pissed it off more and killed it so once I kill like a certain type of plant, it kind of just turns me off on that type of plant for a while. Now, I was more comfortable getting the Raffidophora hayi because it was Raffidophora and I just kind of assumed, you know, all of the other Raffidophora varieties that I have are really easy. So I was like, you know, maybe this one will be easy too. But yeah, I killed it. I murdered it. Very long, slow, painful death. It broke my heart. Such a pretty plant. But yeah, he's dead. So I guess I can throw him away now. What else? What else? Oh, this is fun. Let's do this. Back in the spring, guys, if you all remember, I did a plant swap with my friend Alex from Beantown House Plants. And yeah, well, she sent me all kinds of really good stuff. But the main thing, one of the main things that I was the most excited to swap with her for was Hoya Australis Lisa. Now, I had been looking high and low for this Hoya okay and i could not find it for a reasonable price i could only find teeny little cuttings for like a hundred dollars and i was like no 
So she sent me a little cutting of hers and oh my gosh guys, it's completely rooted. Like it literally has roots coming out the drainage holes on the bottom of this little orchid pot. Someone asked where I got these. I get these from Amazon, by the way. If anyone is wondering, Amazon, yes. So I don't know, it had like maybe these two leaves and this one, but it has rooted up very, very well. And look how tall she is and beautiful. She's growing like a weed. Like I know the regular Hoya Australis grows really fast. It's like my fastest growing Hoya, but I did not expect the variegated variety to grow this fast. And it, it just, it is, it's putting off new leaves and I love, like I'll really have to show you guys when these leaves first come in. They are like a blood red. They're so pretty. If we look here, the vine is continuing to grow and there's two more little leaf buds coming in right there. This right here was a newer little leaf. I don't know what happened there. It didn't get any larger, but it's fine. So yeah, I finally have a fully rooted, established Hoya Australis Lisa. I know that I could definitely take this Hoya out of my little humidity box now and put it over in my Hoya shelf, but honestly, it's just doing so well in the sphagnum moss, in the humidity box, that I just, I don't think I'm gonna do that yet. I think I'm gonna leave it in there for a while longer until I decide to pot it up. It's just growing so well, it's growing so fast, and I don't want to do anything to disrupt that, I guess. I love my little Hoya Australis Lisa. Thank you so much, Alex. Callahan, my seven month old, she's seven months old now, woke up from her nap and she's in here with me now in a little playpen right here. So if you can hear her, my apologies. So this is the rest of my brandy. So I ended up losing like most uh, all of the leaves on this, but these little three leaves here are new. Aren't they so cute? And then we have this new leaf and another one behind it. I just have her and Moss and she's doing really well. Not much else to say, but you see in the other piece of her. Let's look at this guy. This is my Anthurium Forgidii that I hauled for you guys, I don't know, a month or two ago? Can't remember exactly, but uh, so this plant did not handle shipping well at all. It looked really good after it arrived, aside from the newest leaf being snapped. But over the course of a few days, you know, it did, it, it was hit, okay? It was hit, that shipping hit it hard. And I lost a leaf, and then we had this one which looks like crap, and this one which got a little bit of fungus on it as well, and I had to remove that. Um, but these leaves are still holding on, believe it or not. And then we have this little one here which looks pretty rough. This is pretty standard, pretty typical for an Anthurium shipment. Uh, for being in the mail for a few days. A lot of anthuriums just don't ship well, particularly velvet leaf anthuriums. But I moved this to my little humidity box and guess what guys? I just checked on it the other day actually and noticed this, but look, we have a new freaking leaf. There is a new leaf coming on on him, so it looks like he's gonna be okay. I do have him in moss. Now he does have a really healthy root system, but I don't know, whenever I'm in doubt, it's like when in doubt, throw it in moss. That's just kind of what I do, and it's worked out really well for me. So yeah, I have him in moss, rehabbing in my humidity box, top covered, and he's surviving. The old leaves are still hanging on, they're still there, and the roots are healthy has a very substantial root system. And then we have this new leaf, which I'm just over the freaking moon about. I can't even tell you how excited I truly am, y'all. We have another growth point coming in right there. Very cool. It just means that he is acclimating well enough that he feels comfortable putting off a new leaf. And that just tells me that, you know, I, he's gonna be okay. Really love this plant. The Anthurium Forgetii is just a really unique and beautiful plant in itself. So I can't wait until he pushes off several leaves and just grows into this gorgeous, large leaf velvet goddess, okay? Okay, I also wanted to show you guys my Florida ghost. I got this from Camilla's House of Plants actually as a replacement for my pink princess philodendron that arrived with root rot. And it was teeny tiny. So this was labeled as a Florida ghost mint. The leaves when they came in, they did come in minty. I think this was like the whitest leaf that I had gotten. But most of them came in like this, minty, and they stayed that color, they didn't change. Now I didn't have it in super bright light or anything, but I've since learned, thanks to you guys, that if you give a mint brighter light, it's just a ghost. There's no such thing as a mint. So 
that is what I did. I challenged that theory. I put it in my humidity box under a grow light and lo and behold guys, it started pew, 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 shooting off these insanely white ghost leaves. Look at this. So we got this one, we got this one, and I had never gotten a fully white leaf before on this plant. And then if you look under here, we have more coming in. These are brand new. This one, this one. Um, we have a new one trying to get come out of this little uh, stem right here. I really wanted the ghost more than the mint. I love those white leaves. I'm so excited to learn this is actually just a regular Florida ghost and I can get those white leaves by increasing the light situation. I love him, he's so pretty. Now I'm gonna show you my little elbow that I also hauled when I hauled the uh, for giddy eye. So this was a trade. I traded two cuttings of my Splendid actually. Traded cuttings of my Splendid for this top cutting of this Albo Monstera. It was not rooted. It had two leaves. I have waited so long to own an actual Albo. I have the most gorgeous Thai constellation that just put off two beautiful fenestrated leaves. Been waiting a year and a half to get a fenestrated leaf on that baby. So very exciting but i didn't have an elbow so because i wasn't willing to fork over the money for a node or a wet stick but i was lucky enough to get to do this swap and get an elbow this is a top cutting so that just means that this stem here will push out new growth it will eventually push out a new leaf and continue growing from there now i did pull this out actually uh probably about two weeks ago when i checked on the other philodendron and it does have roots it has a pretty substantial root system. It has some long, long boys going on. So it rooted up very fast. I'm honestly very impressed with how quick the roots formed on this. And it's just doing so well. I didn't have it in an enclosed space. I just kind of had it setting out on my little rack over there. But I decided a couple weeks ago when I seen the roots to go ahead and put it in my humidity box because I'm trying to increase more root growth, but I'm also trying to increase humidity around it and encourage him to push off a new leaf for me. That's gonna be like, ooh, that's gonna be so exciting, guys. So yeah, my little abo has rooted and it's doing very well. I'll keep you posted whenever he finally gives me my first new leaf. And then this is my little, I was getting these really confused. I was calling the philodendron silver stripe, cream splash, and Rio all the same plant and that is like totally wrong like they're all three different they're all three different sport varieties of the Brazil so I learned that this is actually a philodendron cream splash and the difference is basically just where the variegation lies but yes this is the cream splash and it rooted up really well in water and then we have this new little baby leaf pushing out here and there's a new growth point right here pushing up. So I'm really excited about this too. Um, it, like I said, it rooted really good and there's another little growth point coming up right here. So I can't wait until this puts off several different vines and starts to trail and just turns into a fully established, you know, a full plant, like a grown plant. I can't wait, it's gonna be so beautiful. Okay guys, I could show you some more, but that's really most that's most of what's going on that's exciting right now anyways i'm definitely going to be coming back to share some not so happy updates in the future share some plants that i'm struggling with not doing the best with uh yeah we're going to talk about that in the future in a future video but i think i've been going for a while so i better go ahead and end this now i know a lot of you really like or look forward to these update videos so yeah it was about time that i put one out um, I will try to keep up with these updates, you know, at least monthly instead of every three months like I have been doing. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Um, I will see you soon in my next video. Feel free to leave me video suggestions down below. I'll see y'all soon. Bye guys!